The massive Skymaster F4 is here. So very excited to unbox this thing. We've got wings, we've got fuselage. This is gonna be a fun project. So let's unbox this massive F4 aircraft. Last year, about this time, we built a pair of the normal or smaller size F4s, and this is the larger scale model. So we're gonna start off opening up the wings because it's the smaller box. So let's get that down in front and take a look. All right, so when we first pop open the wing box, the top comes off and this is exactly what we have. So we are, oh, there it is. That's very cool. So we're gonna pull some of the styrofoam out and then we will yank these wings out and take a look at them. All right, so we got our wings laid out here and uh, they were packaged very well in that box. No issues, it looks like. But we'll take a closer look as we get them unwrapped. All right, so there is our wings. It's pretty cool seeing the larger F4 just because it's such a different setup. The wings are actually really narrow, but the, the, the kind of the key with this aircraft is on the smaller F4s, what happens is your wings and your rest of your wings are the wing, but on the larger F4, this one, this is the belly of the aircraft plus the inboard piece of the wing and then we've got our outboard piece of our wing that actually attaches on there. So pretty unique setup, um, pretty cool. I'm excited to, uh, excited to work on this guy. All right, so there's a shot of the detail of the wings. We've got lots of nomenclature everywhere, just like the smaller F4 that we did. Nice detail for sure. We've got foam on our root of our wing. We've got a carbon tube in there or the receiver tube, the phenolic tube, and looks. Looks good. Flip that guy over while we're here. Let's take a look at our landing gear. Oh, there we go. Oh, it's locked in the up position. That's nice to see as well too. It's not relying on the air pressure to hold it up. So we've got painted gear, which is awesome. I'm excited to see the larger tires for this guy, but uh, yeah, this looks just like the smaller one, but uh, larger scale. It'll also, because our wings are larger, it should make it easier too to to deal with some of the issues that we had on the smaller one. Yeah, see on the smaller one, we had to go with the bell crank set up for this inner door, but this one, the geometry is much better. So that's a nice thing to see for sure. So we've got our second wing that we're gonna pop apart and take a look at. Should be an identical match to the first one. And yes, it looks just like the first one. Same thing, nice finish on it. I think one of the things that's a little bit different with the larger size version of this aircraft is just some of the details like this um, is not captured very well on the smaller size. Maybe it is, but so something like this, this detail is not per, not as pronounced on the smaller uh, the smaller size aircraft. This I'm I'm sure this is here for the landing gear to actually fit in the wing because the wings are quite narrow on the F4. But uh, yeah, it's kind of a cool detail that's just larger on this big F4. That's really nice to see. And one of the other details here is just the plugins for the uh, the wing tips. So on the on the real F4, this is the hinge line, so it actually folds up for space saving on the aircraft carrier. But we've got a nice plug there as well too that's already installed from Skymaster. So wicked stuff. And I do like their weathering here. It's got some nice, very light shadows. I don't know if it's, that's gonna show up properly on camera. Usually the weathering is a lot more definitive on camera. And then we've just got some nice kind of dirt marks here and there. That looks awesome. Cool, so second wing looks good. So we're gonna set this aside and we are going to open up the big box, which has, it's all fun, but it has the fun stuff in it. All right, and popped open the big box, pulled some of the styrofoam out. There was a bunch of styrofoam on top there. And that's what it looks like. That uh, OMG servo, there should be, th I think three of them in this box. Those are from Doug at Jets North. And we're gonna be just trying those servos out, testing those servos and giving our feedback to Doug on 
those servos. So we're gonna pop all these pieces out one at a time and we'll take a look at them. We'll get our table set up and start exploring what this thing looks like. Now there was a bit of a damage on the front of this box. Uh, that damage was from the container when it came from overseas, but uh, it was open before it got shipped to us and checked out and everything looked good. So. so we're gonna pull these parts out one at a time, no specific order. I'm just gonna do the vertical stab or rudder first here because it's here. Now the, uh, the servos were supplied with the kit. One of the downsides to getting these supplied servos is I've actually never put a SkyMaster plane together with the servos supplied. So it's gonna be interesting to see what they did from the factory. Regardless, we pull the servos out, like this happens on the BVM kits. We pull all the servos out, the gear, everything gets Loctited. Um, but it is going to be curious to see what the factory actually does. So obviously we know the scheme of this F4, it's the ever traditional scheme, but uh, there's our vertical stab, our rudder. Very nice lighting kits installed already. So we've got our leading edge on the vertical light. We've got our pin light on the back and that looks good. Nice connectors on these guys too. This is very impressive to see from SkyMaster. These are locking connectors. They almost look like a miniature version of amp connectors. I kind of wish I knew what these were because they look very curious for sure. <clears throat> so the rudder is very simple on the F4. There's an L, L bend or L, uh, L piece of metal that interlocks when you put this on. So there's no servos or anything in, in the surface because it's also very thin. All right, so we'll undo our wing tips next. These are the extensions that go on the wing that create the entire wing. And again, they are a very skinny surface. Um, we've got some lights mounted on the, uh, the ends. So there is a plug-in at the base or the root of this, uh, this surface. Wing tip extension, those look really cool. Very nice, very nice. So nice and solid. We've got some carbon rods here, some solid carbon rods. Um, we've got our four pin connector. We've got the standard uh, aluminum tab from SkyMaster. So there's a close up of the detail. Very light as well too, and they followed the same kind of weathering pattern as the wings themselves. So very nice. So we'll pop open the other one now and take a look at it and it should be an exact match to this one. So left wing tip, exact match to the right one. Looks good. Same thing as far as construction goes. Awesome. All right, so some of these things like the, uh, the pipes here, of course, this is a twin turbine aircraft. We are putting twin Zykoi 195s in this aircraft. It's going to be an absolute hoot. But um, pipes for uh, unboxing purposes, we're just going to leave those things wrapped up. Uh, we'll take a closer look at these, of course, as we get into the build itself. We've got our air cylinders and we've got our chutes and hardware. This is, uh, is nice to see. So standard SkyMaster hardware package, which is very typical. And we've got some cool shoots as well. All right, so we've got our tail section here, our, I forget what this is called, but our flying stab or movable stab or something like that. Anyways, our elevators are here. I know I'm gonna get chastised for not knowing the name of it, but sometimes you know, you've been working all, all day on a Saturday and it just doesn't really matter anymore, does it? So this surface, just by nature, is quite large. I mean, it's, I guess it's not huge compared to like an entire wing of an airplane, but it's a big surface. It's also a little bit awkward because of the, uh, the angle to it, so. All right, so horizontal stab, very, very nice, nice and solid. Uh, typical for the, uh, the F4's very thin airfoil on it. And uh, this is the control system here. So you've got two carbon plates um, and you've got this big ball joint right there. And then so both of your servo arms mount to each side of that ball joint. The ball joint's supposed to help even things out a little bit, but we'll still end up balancing those servos. But that is 
awesome. All right, so this is just uh, unboxing this stuff or unwrapping it as it comes out of the box. This is our tail section. Um, I'm curious to see if the fuselage is in two pieces or three pieces. That's very interesting. So let's pop this guy open, see what it looks like. All right, we got some ordnance stuffed back here. And there is a full ordnance kit with this aircraft. So we've got the, uh, the big drop tanks and everything. So it's, uh, it's a full on serious uh, aircraft with all of the associated ordnance. What a difference in size of this one compared to the smaller one. So huge difference in overall size of this aircraft. Wow, very nice. So our chute mechanism's in there already, which is very cool. But uh, you can see some of our parts and stuff inside there. So all typical Skymaster stuff. It's nice to see um, some carbon rods here that join these pieces together. Very hefty back end. Got some of our ordnance here, some of our pylons. And there's a shot back there with that stuff removed. So very, very nice, looks great. And a shot of our chute mechanism there. Oh, that's cool, even comes up from the side. Very nice. So that's all installed and all figured out as well. We've got our air cylinder back there. Very cool, very nice. So it looks good. Tail section of this aircraft is big. Uh, it really puts into perspective how the rest of this thing is gonna look. So let's, uh, we're gonna clear the table off and we're gonna start putting these pieces on our table. All right, main part of the fuselage on the table. Now, when this was sitting in the box, I wasn't sure how it splits up, but the fuselage is actually three pieces. So we've got this part of our fuselage, the tail section, which we've taken a look at, and then our front section here separates from the main section. Now, I'm not exactly sure how we're gonna be putting this thing together because we wanna maximize our shipping and minimize the cost for shipping, but uh, we may have to take a look at things and see how things work out because you can only start splitting things so much before it just gets a little ridiculous. All right, so excited. And there she is. Very nice. I do like the weathering on this one. Not typical Skymaster weathering. They didn't go in there like on our F-14 and the SU and just airbrush all the panel lines. They actually, looks like they kind of filled them and, and did some work on them. Looks really good. Well done, Skymaster, well done. So one of the very different things with this aircraft is there is no hatches in the fuselage. So your access to everything is underneath, which is a little bit different, of course, because you've got, uh, you've got to do everything from the underside. So the, and that's why those wing pieces join together to almost, it's almost like, a, it's almost like a warbird as an example. Like I think about a, a, the, the Strega that we built, both the wings go together and they create the underside of the fuselage. That's the same type of thing here. So. Uh, maybe we don't have an operational canopy because I see we've got a latch here, so we'll have to see how that all works out. Um, I haven't seen our canopy yet, so I'm assuming it's inside the fuselage. That is awesome. We'll just take this guy out. All right, it's a hefty front end. I thought there were some extra parts in there, but there's not. It's just the, uh, the landing gear and the cockpit assembly. That's cool. So that is the front end. I'm going to flip this fuselage on its side or upside down and we'll take a look at the underside and what's in here. All right, so we've got fuel tanks in here. We've got our, uh, some of our ordnance pieces. So we've got a bunch of ordnance pieces here. We'll pop these guys all out. Oh, we do have a hatch right here. How's, how do you get to that thing? Oh, look at that. I don't know how to get to it, but there's a hatch right there. <laughs> oh, you stick a little thing in there and you can get to it. Okay. So there is a, there is an access hatch right there, which is cool. All right. So that is all of our stuff that's in the fuselage. So we're just going to lay this guy down. We're going to, uh, I think we're going to take a look at the nose cone next because that completes the fuselage and uh, we'll keep pulling some of these parts out. 
All right, so we'll pop open the nose cone here next, and then we'll take a look at our tail cones as well, or our turkey feathers. So this guy looks like it has the same kind of mount system that our uh, F-16 we just finished has for the uh, nose cone management. It's definitely hefty. That's a hefty piece of fiberglass. Wowzers. So the cone itself is extremely light. This piece probably weighs close to a pound. Um, but I do like the layout of it because we've got batteries up top, batteries down below. So that is nice. And I'm assuming this plane probably ends up need needing nose weight. So this extra weight is probably not an issue at all. All right, I'm excited to pull out the turkey feathers. These aren't uh, as fancy as the metal ones we installed on one of our ones previous, but this is always one of those cool little pieces of art. So there we go. Turkey feathers look good. Fairly simple. Nothing too crazy going on there. We may be able to add a little bit of detail on this as well too. I think that would be a nice little touch. So, all right, so we've got the three pieces of the fuselage joined together. Uh, pulled the rear cockpit tub out just to access the bolts and she's looking pretty awesome. So, so we are going to put our vertical stab on and then I think we're gonna get our wings bolted up, put together and bolted up and see what this thing looks like fully assembled. She's looking really nice. Big plane too, it's, uh, that table is six feet long, I think. Maybe five feet, something like that. And uh, it's a pretty long plane. Just guessing maybe about uh, 10 feet long-ish. And here's some of our close-up details of this beautiful aircraft. This is a very exciting project. It's nice to see one of these large ones in person. Uh, we don't have the wing bolted on, it's just resting in place. And we, uh, for simplicity for the pictures and unboxing video, we're not putting the tail on, the horizontal portion of the tail, but there's the vertical. And she is awesome. So here's a close-up of the hatch right there. So you'd have uh, access to view the turbines, or I guess if you did your startup stuff right here, I would actually prefer that anyways. I would rather have a startup board where everything is visible and viewable from this location because there is no other locations to do any of that stuff except the nose cone. But if you start doing that, that's and that's some of the stuff we've got to think about because if we're shipping this with the nose separated, then we've got to think about that. Uh, we want to minimize the connections going to the nose. Um, so there's lots to think about, but uh, this would be the make the most sense as far as a, uh, a running hatch, if you want to call it that, where everything's done in that location. But beautiful aircraft. Very impressive, Skymaster did a great job on this. And of course, we've got the classic scheme. And that is the unboxing of the Skymaster large F4 aircraft. We do have all of the parts in stock for this aircraft, so it should be starting fairly soon. Obviously, we got lots of projects in the queue, but uh, we are going to be getting this one going shortly. So if you guys have any questions or comments, list them down below. If you're not a subscriber, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below if you want to see some of the beautiful F4 build series coming up. Thanks guys so much for watching and we will see you in the next video.